Welcome to the first annual Presidential Fantasy Draft. If you can manage your behavior and participate and be respectful, this is what we will be doing until we go on Christmas break next Wednesday. If you go into the Article 2 module, you will see this little link. It says U.S. POTUS Fantasy Draft. Here's how it works. You are on a team. Your team's name means nothing. It's just a political party from American history. Your team has no presidents on it. By the end of class, you will have five presidents on your team. There will be five rounds of the draft, just like in the NFL. There's a twist. The first round, you get a random president. Google's going to pick it for you. I thought about doing it ahead of time, and then someone said, you screwed me and gave me James K. Polk. So I'll do it while you're here, so you know I'm not screwing anybody over. So round one is random. <laughs> Rounds two through five, you as a team, bring me a little slip of paper. Mr. Hansen, behind you, there's some little notepads. Could you give each team a couple of those, and then they can tear them up? Just like the real NFL draft, you will send me your pick once you have made it. When it's your turn on the clock, you get one minute to make a pick. Reason for that, part of being a president, is making decisions under stress in limited amounts of time. That's why we're doing it this way. Plus, it's pretty dang fun. Okay? You are going to pick presidents that you think fit these five categories. It's not just pick the cool ones or your favorite ones. We're going to have presentations. They're only five minutes long. We'll worry about that more later. But your team has to take a president from your roster that you drafted and make a case that they are one of the following five categories. Number one, and this is on Wednesday, most overrated. Like they get too much credit. History books say they're too good. They're not as good as history says. Okay, so you might have a present mind and go, ooh, I think this guy's overrated. Second category, best use of clemency powers. I tried to pick one kind of obscure, like no one's right now going, ooh, ooh this guy comes to mind. But you know all that stuff's on Wikipedia and you can Google it, right? Like one guy used his clemency power to give amnesty to all the draft dodgers from the Vietnam War. Now, you might not think that was a good use. You might think that's a bad. Others have pardoned ex-presidents, like Nixon got a presidential pardon. For who? I'm not going to tell you. Okay. So, third category, best domestic policy accomplishments. So things in the U.S., health care, education, tax reform. Wow infrastructure, anything in the U.S. that you think they did a good job, you put them in that category. So you might want to draft the president who has a good record or reputation for that. Now, conversely, it's not fun without some negative ones, most disastrous foreign policy, like a failed war, they made some country mad, anything outside the U.S. that they did a terrible job with. Okay. Now, the last one is pretty open to interpretation. Most unconventional president of all time. They didn't follow policy and procedure. They didn't follow tradition. They didn't fit the mold of what you think a president would be. Okay? For example, at the top, you guys see that link to the spreadsheet? On the bottom tab, you can see how period three went if you want to look, but we're period five tab. Here's an example for most unconventional. I have, amongst lots of other data points in the spreadsheet for you, one of the categories is their occupation. So let me give you a couple in order and tell me if any of these stand out to you. Lawyer, soldier, lawyer, lawyer, soldier, lawyer, 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 tailor, soldier, lawyer. Those are in order occupations of presidents. So you could say like by his job, another one. Hollywood actor. Okay? Thank you for getting my reference. So in this spreadsheet, I have every president in order from the first, George Washington, to the 44th, Barack Obama. It has all the info you'd want on a spreadsheet. If you like math and sports, 
There are lots of jobs that combine both of those two things. People do this for a living, like NFL teams or MLB or NBA teams. They get all this data on draft prospects, and they make a board and say, like, here's who our top pick for point guard would be or shooting guard or whatever. So that's why I have all this data for you. You shouldn't have to do a lot of Googling. You can, of course, but you shouldn't have to. The first thing we have to do is draw in the order of the draft, because usually it's based on record, like the Cleveland Browns will definitely go first, probably followed by the Chicago Bears. <laughs> because they suck, we let them go first. Hey, yeah. The Bears getting that first round draft pick. You might be I'd crazy. like to remind Ms. Athlon, Four years. Four years. Oh. your Dallas Cowboys are on a losing streak. My Buccaneers are on a five-game winning streak. They play next Sunday night. All I'm saying is... I would entertain a motion for a bet. me a milkshake, so if you want to bet too, uh, for the Vikings, so I mean, we can bet on... I'm not responsible for his failed bets, but I'll make one, because what kind of milkshakes do you make that are good? I forgot you were a Buccaneers fan, but you're making fun of my bears. But I can, like, go buy I'd one. I don't remember that. I probably would have felt that. I want homemade dessert. I don't even have to worry about making one because I don't have to. Okay. Oh, Give me eight points and I'll make you homemade milkshake for whatever the best thing Mom Apple makes. What is eight you gotta win by eight. I sure hope so. They're huge favorites. Yeah, okay. Yeah. They just have to win or lose. No, they gotta win by eight points. No. Three and a half points. I don't know. Three and a half points. Three and a half. I just gotta win by more than a field goal. Cowboys don't oh, you're so confident you don't even care the terms, but you won't take three and a half points. That's how it takes. The Cowboys are gonna take three and a half. I'm gonna be mad because okay, I got a bear. They've sucked the last Why are you taking the balls? Just bet the man. Okay, you can't you have, can't have a push. Hey, Forrester. Yes. Because then if it's four points spread and they win by four, see the problem with that? They serve a three and a half points. Okay. Deal. It's on YouTube. It's like, it was like 16 to 5 or something. Yeah. They always win. They won like 19 to 11 this week. Okay. I think the Bucks actually beat the Bears. Because we can't seed them based on wins and losses, because you guys have no like record to go off of, I have a hat. Don't ask me what hat it is. It doesn't matter. In this hat are little pieces of paper with numbers 1 through 5. The number that you draw will be your <coughs> position in the draft, like first pick, second pick. Don't cry if you're fifth, because guess who goes first in the next round? The last person to go. It flips. Every round goes backwards order. Does that make sense? So the middle is pretty much screwed. No, then you... No, because it averages out. In theory, it's about all the same. So, we're going to let you guys go first. Jessica, please draw a number. Wait, so 10 to 36. Mr. I'll show you. 10 to 36. Okay, so in the first round, can you take Constitution Party and put them where the wigs are? Because they're going to steal every Steelers first. Where the wigs are. Just switch those two. Most of the parties are Ball wins. Draw the show. Okay, libertarians are drawing for their position. We need to talk about the clarifier. Yeah, we do. Who wears a football team? Libertarians pick third. So right where they are is perfect. Okay. That's all right. Yeah, no, it's really not. Everybody else is good. Yeah. You will be picking... Last in the first round. Uh, yeah, but they get to go first in the next round. Doesn't oh, this first round right. really, really doesn't matter, matter since we don't get to pick anybody? Okay, what part are you guys? Yes. Um, GOP is the nickname for Republicans. Good. Yeah. There are only two spots left, and they're the top two. Two. Three. Okay, GOP picks second. Now, I'd have you draw a number, but there's only one. I want to draw it still. There's only one in there. You would have Tyson. One. <laughs> Not like Seattle okay. last night. Now, here's what we'll do. Each round, that order lost by 28. So, Democrats were first. Okay. Anyway. I told you the first round is random, right? Yeah. So, to make it really fair, Whig Party, there are 44 presidents. Here's a disclaimer, because this happened to us earlier this morning. Grover Cleveland was the 22nd and the 24th president. If you get 22nd or 24th, you get him both terms, just to be clear. 
Okay, all the other two term presidents were back to back. He took a break. Okay. So, this pick is for the Whig Party. Come on, Swivel. All right. Hey, Google. Pick a number between 1 and 44. Sure. That's kind of Ten. Ten. You guys get President John Tyler. I didn't even know that So here's how this works. President number ten. Claire, if you put that. POTUS name John Tyler. What you're gonna do, Paige, is on the draft board. This team drafted, if you go down to number ten next to John Tyler, put Wig. So we know he is taken. Okay, the first one is random. So the next pick is the GOP party. Hey, Google, pick a number between 1 and 44. Is this the first one random? Sure. This just makes it interesting. That makes us laugh. 43. Ooh. President George W. Bush. Lucky. I'm not going to lie. I think he perfectly fits one of those categories. I won't tell you which one. So all you do is go down to George W. Bush, go to the tab that says period five at the bottom. Are you clear? Okay, next pick is the Libertarian Party. Wait, do they? Are we supposed to put our name in next to it? Yep. You can't type because I can't trust your class to have That's access to have this spreadsheet. You have to earn that trust back. Hey, Google. Who would ever do some Pick a number yeah. between 1 and 44. Make it worse Can we make it worse again? That's good advice. This is your pick, Libertarians. 13. Ooh. Uh, Millard Fillmore. One of those guys like, what? He's the president? Yes. 13, Fillmore. Okay, Constitution Party, your first pick. Hey, Google, pick a number between 1 and 44. Oh, I want the same. Between 1 and 44. Let's see. Is yeah, your number 22? Wait, I won't say. Hey, Google, pick a number. I have a hunch it was 22. <laughs> Ouch. Okay, try it again. Hey, Google, pick a number between 1 and 44. Coming right up. And if it's one that's already picked, we'll go again. Ah, Lincoln! What? Yeah! <laughs> we get the bigger name. Nice job, Constitution Party. Okay, Democrats. Oh. Hey, Google, pick a number between 1 and 44. Oh, you're going to get Obama. <laughs> Someone last class got Obama in the random. Thank God. 33. Thank God. 33. President Harry I bomb Japan Truman. I love him. <laughs> He's all yours. Oh, you got yeah. And I would say his 1948 election, biggest upset since Donald Trump in 2016, right? Like, yeah. you have to go back to Harry S. Truman. Now, you have no say there, but you see some presidents already came off the board. Here's what you have to do. You're going to get a minute on the clock, starting with the Democrats, to deliver me your pick. If you look at the instructions here, you do get one three-minute timeout you can take during this class. If you feel like we don't have a good pick, you call timeout, and I put three minutes on the clock. Otherwise, you get one minute per round. You must deliver me in writing your pick, or I pick for you. What are we picking for? Just so here's what you're looking at. you got a president on your team. You need to decide, and some of you, honestly... Everybody but you guys got pretty clear that you've heard of all these guys, except Miller Fillmore. What category do you think the guy you have fits right now of the five? Okay, right here on the calendar. Overrated is going to be Wednesday's topic. Just a second. Friday's topic is best use of clemency powers. Next Monday's topic is going to be best domestic policy achievements, stuff within the U.S., Number four is most disastrous foreign policy. And then the last one next Wednesday, I think, is going to be most unconventional president. What's today? We're just drafting today. So there's five categories. Most overrated. Best domestic policies. Worst foreign policies. 
Best use of clemency power, most unconventional. You have one president already on your team. You're going to draft four more that you think fit a category. Best according to the history books? Or no, you're going to convince me in your presentation. You're going to be a salesman. So you're going to say, okay, let me give you an example. Wait, where are the requirements? Let's say, let's say one of the categories instead were most disastrous domestic policy. And my ancestors were Native American. I, this is not a real category, I'm just giving you an example. I'd go, okay, worst domestic policy, Trail of Tears, Andrew Jackson. I want him. Not because he's a good president or a bad one, because he fits that category. So when you look at those categories, like most overrated, I know who I would pick, I'm not going to tell you. But you think, okay, history teachers all rave about this guy and have a bro crush on him, but I really don't think he was that great because he violated the Constitution all the time, or whatever, then you plug him into that category. So you have four slots left. You're going to draft a president having one of those in mind. Most overrated. Best use of clemency. Best domestic policy achievement. Most disastrous foreign policy. And most unconventional. Okay? Where do you get those requirements? They're on the calendar. And they're on this assignment right here. It tells you what day each one's going to be. Okay? Question. Yes, sir? It wasn't what uh, Eisenhower and his team and his team were here, but he was the president after World War II, not Vietnam. You're talking to draft doctors, right? President Daryl R. Ford. So if I were you, I'd make a draft board and say, like, this president best fits that category, we want him. But like the real draft, the Constitution Party might draft him before you do, and you got to have a plan B. Okay? So the first round, here's the order. Well, the first one you get to pick, thank you for clarifying. Claire, if you could put, yep, Democrats first. You're going to be on the clock, followed by Constitution Party. Libertarians will always pick third. GOP will have the fourth pick. Whig Party will have the fifth pick, but the first pick in the next round. So you'll get two in a row. You get one minute per. You will feel rushed. Welcome to being the president. When I get your pick in writing, you will know that someone is ready to pick if you've ever watched the draft. Because you'll hear that sound. That means the pick is in and I'll read the pick. Okay? So, we have one minute. Democrats, you are on the clock. Can someone be my timer? So are we just doing the overrated thing? You can pick in whatever category order you want. I would have a list of two presidents for each category. That's just the schedule when we present. <laughs> so I don't like to give hints. Okay. <laughs> With the first pick of the second round of the U.S. President Fantasy Draft, what party are you guys? Democrats. The Democrats. How could I forget? I put Kyle on your team. <laughs> are drafting President Gerald R. Ford. Welcome to the Democrats. So, Gerald Ford is number 30, not 38, sorry. He's on Team Democrat. He is off the board. You cannot draft him. That means the timer is now on to the Constitution Party's pick. You have one minute. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> With the second pick in the U.S. presidential fantasy draft, what party are you guys? Constitution. Constitution Party is drafting Teddy. Don't mess with me because I have a big stick, Roosevelt. Oh, well. Welcome to the Constitution Party. Okay, that means libertarians, you are on the clock. The rap name, Hatcher. With the third pick in the U.S. presidential fantasy draft, the Libertarians have drafted Thomas Jefferson, third president of the United States. Solid choice. I named my son after him. Next. GOP party, you will be on the clock, followed by Whig party, you are on deck. You get a minute for each. Okay, GOP party is drafting with their first draft. First president in American history, George Washington. Welcome to the Republican Party. Now, Whig party, you get a minute for this pick, and then another minute if you want, but it's two separate picks to be fair since you're last. You go first. Yeah, you know the Can we draft. Turn in both at the same time? No. Okay. No, you can't do that. You can't do that. You guys need to watch the draft. Okay. Wigs, you're on the clock. Let's discuss this pick before you make it. I can make advice. I'm not giving them advice. Does he get a lot of love? All I did was ask three questions. I didn't say anything, did I? They didn't change their mind. <laughs> the Whig Party is drafting with their first pick, youngest president ever elected, and one of four assassinated, John F. Kennedy. Welcome to the Whig Party. John F. Kennedy is drafted by the Whigs. 35. Oh, they want to just hit it the next one already. Oh, you know what I mean? Now, in the third round, they get the first pick. We're going in reverse order. You guys are always third libertarians. The Whigs are making a bold move here. They traded up to get this pick, and they're going to take 44th President Barack Obama. Oh, good. Welcome to the Whig Party. Now, that means GOP Party, you are on the clock. One minute for your second choice. You guys know what job he had before he got into politics? <laughs> Don't ask me what would I know, I'm just a teacher. That's why I asked. Cuts off the Twitter. So, the GOP party is choosing 
Lyndon Baines Johnson, who inherited the presidency from JFK. LBJ would be 36 then, I think. We yeah. had to take him before, but GOP yeah. has drafted Lyndon Baines Johnson. Do you guys see in the spreadsheet what his job was? I, I've been trying to look. Um, was he the chair? I made a joke and no one got it. It's okay. Teacher. Libertarians, you are on the clock. One minute. Have a category in mind. Thank Mr. Walton for the tunes today. He put this together for me. And he found the sound effect for the draft. Okay, it comes in. Remember, you do have one three minute timeout if you choose. Libertarians, 30 seconds, no rush. Constitution, you're on deck. Like you think those clemency powers we learned about, they did the best job of using them. Remember, Mr. Hansen? Yeah. Not using them is also a use of them, right? Ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Would you like to use a timeout? Hey, will you put their farmage back up real quick? Like the categories? Yeah. Raza, can you click today on the counter, please? So, with their second pick, the Libertarians are drafting former Supreme Allied Commander in World War II, Republican President Dwight D. Eisenhower, who's going to be number... 34. Welcome to the Libertarian Party. He had a great campaign slogan, I like Ike. Very memorable. Not about Mike? Okay. Next pick, Constitution Party. You are on the clock. Followed by Democrats who will be picking two. What's unconventional? Like, you don't fit the mold of normal. Like, Donald Trump's very unconventional, right? So maybe they were quirky... Oh, solid choice. Solid choice. Right. <laughs> Okay, the Constitution Party's draft pick is in. They will be drafting our 40th president, Republican Ronald, everybody's favorite dad's president, Reagan. Welcome to the Constitution Party. So, Democrats, you will be on the clock. You will have two picks. They don't have to come in right away. Time is ticking. Thirty seconds, Democrats. You could say like they broke traditions, they had an unusual rise to power. Ten seconds, you can call time out if you want to call your one time out. Okay, time is up on the Democrats. Interesting choice. The Democrats are drafting President William Henry Harrison. 
I could guess what category you're looking at putting him in towards. Mm -hmm. William Henry Harrison is a Democrat. Now, you get another pick here, but you get another minute to make it. So, the clock starts now. You're back on the clock, Democrats. <laughs> Constitution Party, you are on deck. Libertarians, you are in the hole. I'm going to let, because some teams only have four people, but I'll let everybody play. Yes, you cannot be caught. I'll do that for you, Clarice. Mm -hmm. Democrats, you need to call timeout or make your pick. Call timeout or make your pick. Okay, Democrats are calling a three minute timeout. This gives you guys more time too, so use it to your advantage. Yeah, that's a lot of time. Is this our last one? What did we miss here? This is round four. There are five rounds. Overrated, clemency powers, domestic, disastrous foreign policy, and unconventional. Democrats. If all this time you should figure out how to get us all free college tuition, Democrats. <laughs> Constitution, you're on deck. Libertarians are in the hole. Democrats were smart, they'd take him with this pick, but we'll see. No, I'm rolling my eyes at their pick. Okay, after much deliberation, Hatcher, I'm getting emails about you from the office. Don't appreciate that. The Democrats' pick is in. They are picking 39th president. I think he was a peanut farmer from Georgia, if I'm not mistaken. Jimmy Carter. Welcome to the Democratic Party. He really was a Democrat. Okay. Good pick. Now remember, just because he might not be the best president, maybe they have a category in mind. So, that means, on the clock, we have the Constitution Party, followed by Libertarian... Sorry, you were the Constitution Party. No. Constitution. Constitution's up, Libertarian's on deck, GOP's in the hole. Clock starting, one minute. Who do we need now? 
Constitution Party's pick is in. They have drafted the president who has been elected to the most terms in American history and always will be because the Constitution doesn't allow you to get elected four times anymore like FDR did. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, welcome to the Constitution Party. Libertarians, sorry they stole your pick. Welcome to the NFL. Libertarians, one minute, you're on the clock. Sounds so many times I think I am the commissioner. I feel like that would be good if I was Libertarians are drafted, are drafting President Richard Nixon. Tricky Dick himself is now a libertarian. Okay. What number is he? 37. Libertarians. GOP, you are on the clock. Everyone has their time out left except the Democrats. I see what you did there. With their fourth round selection, the GOP party is drafting every Native American's least favorite president, Andrew Old Hickory Jackson. That's twice, yeah. Yeah, that is twice. Uh, did I warn you that people might steal your picks? Andrew Jackson, welcome to the GOP. So, Wig Party, you will get back to back selections to close out your draft. You are on the clock, Wig Party. You should have one category left. We'll talk about what happens to the president when they get drafted later. This should be your last round. After the wings pick, we're all in the last round. You should have five presidents. Google picked one, you pick four. Well, picks in. I know what category you have in mind. Oh, yeah. 
With the last pick in the fourth round, the Whig Party has selected Andrew, oops, Lincoln just got shot, Johnson. Welcome to the Whig Party. If you remember the cartoon from U.S. history where he was stitching the United States back together after the Civil War, then you know he was a tailor. Is that the front one? Right. When he's sitting on the U.S. trying to stitch it back together with... Yes. Now, everybody has one pick left. Wigs, you're going to be back on the clock, followed by the GOP, Libertarians, Constitution, Democrats. You will pick last, so have a contingency. Wigs, you're back on the clock with your last pick. Woodrow Wilson. Welcome to the Whig Party. Okay, next on the clock, GOP. We got a hustle. Two minute warning ring. No one leaves till we're done. Now, what category do you have in mind? Libertarians, you're on deck. You cannot be late. Again. We weren't late. We had like three seconds. <laughs> Is that right, Bo? Ooh. Another one of those. This dude was really a president pick. No. With their last pick in the fifth round, the GOP party selects Chester Arthur. Welcome to the GOP party, President Arthur. Libertarians, you're on the clock. Oh, oh I appreciate that sincerely. Senior, right? Not Q? Okay, and I'm making sure. The Libertarians, with their last pick, are drafting John 
Adam, second president of the John United States. Cena. <laughs> Constitution party, no one's leaving. What category you got in mind? With their last pick, the Constitution Party is drafting Bill, I am still married to Hillary Clinton. Welcome to the Constitution Party. Last choice, Democrats, before we leave. I need it. You can use his rap name like the Libertarians do. Hey. Interesting choice. With the last election, the Democrats pick who most historians unanimously agree is the worst president ever. James Buchanan, welcome to the Democratic Party. Worst stuff you can put on the back table, please. Oh my God. Oh my God.